You're listening to Breakfast with Pablo. Ben Elton is one of Britain's most provocative and entertaining writers from celebrity to climate change from the First World War to the end of the world. His books give a unique perspective on some of the most controversial topics of our time and he joins us on the phone today. Ben Elton, good morning. Good morning indeed. Now, I need to get this out of the way first because I'm an absolutely massive fan of yours. I've read every single book and I'm just so happy to be speaking to you this morning. Wow, perhaps what can I say? That's a <laughs> lovely thing to hear. Um, uh, yeah, I, I've read all of them and I'm really excited uh, for the new one because uh, Two Brothers, Meltdown, Dead Famous are probably my top three uh, of the books that you've written. The new one mm. out now uh, is called Time and Time Again. It revolves around that idea of if you had a chance to go back in time, what would you do? Absolutely. It's a, it's a kind of part historical thriller and part time travel. I mean, with not so much time travel, it's about a plot to prevent the First World War, but it's being orchestrated from the future. So, so you know, it's a thriller, thriller set in 1914 about a man who has, a, has foreknowledge, who knows what's going to happen, trying to prevent that from happening. And so you've got a lot of, you know, hopefully great historical adventure with, you know, good, well-researched historical novel. But also, obviously, as he begins to act, things begin to change. And the, and the, the more he does, the less he knows, because every step he takes reduces the amount of foreknowledge that he has. And so there's a there's a real kind of yeah time loop element to it. So it, it was great fun to write. I love history, and you know it was terrific to get my chance to play with history. Well, I think the concept's great. That what if, and it's always something that you you, know, you speak about with your friends and your partners. That uh, could you go back in time? What would you change? What what drew you to the First World War? Well, certainly, and um, ge- geopolitically, I think it's what I think it's what I would change. I think that. The First World War is when Western civilization lost its way, when it basically, you know, upward trajectory towards a better, more liberal with a small L society, social democracy, universal franchise, the common good. You know, things seem to be going along moderately well in the early 20th century. And then suddenly uh, the First World War was a collective suicide, which produced an unrecognizable Europe, a Europe which within years had had descended into Mm. an unimaginable evil of genocide and totalitarianism with Stalin and with Hitler and all that was to follow. So I think I would try and prevent the First World War and see if European civilization could develop along more civilized lines. Socially and in terms of arts, I think I'd go back and try and stop Tom Parker managing Elvis because I think he ruined him in the end. <laughs> uh, now, <laughs> you have a way of weaving in today's issues and topics into your books. Is that, is that something you deliberately set out to try to do or is it, does it just evolve like that? Mate, that's a good question, and it's the latter. It evolves. I've never set out to tell anyone what to think. I've never set out to set an agenda. I just live in the same world everyone else does, and I'm listening to and talking about the same stuff everyone else is talking about. So when I write Meltdown, it's not like I'm thinking, ooh, I better do a GFC novel because I need to tell everyone what I think about the GFC. No, I'm just, you know, I'm just living in the same world, and that's what's provoking what small artistry there is in my imagination. And likewise... Uh, time and time again, it's not like I'm going, oh, it's the centenary of the First World War, I better do my, my, my novel about the cause of the First World War. The fact that over the last couple of years, particularly in Britain, but also in Oz, we've been having so much documentaries and talk and debate, and so many books published about the causes of the First World War, it just sort of started to make me think, and a novel began to form in my mind. So now, I never plan anything. I, I, I follow my instincts. I'm an organic sort of person. <laughs> now, Two Brothers, uh, your last book, to me, is one of your finest books. However, it's obviously not very funny, like some of your other no. novels. Uh, no. Do you have a preference to write, though? No. I, I, I mean, principally, I write comedy, although over the years I've, I've done more stuff that's, that's very, very non-comedy. There's, there is some comedy in Two Brothers, the comedy of the you know, the fun characters in the family life. But clearly it's a very, very serious book in some ways and an epic story because it's about a family trying to deal with the encroaching, a Jewish family living in as the Nazis come to power in Berlin. Um, This current novel is is lighter. There's more comedy in it. It's still not a comedy in that it's much more of a thriller and an adventure, like, say, I don't know, Dead Famous, another of my novels, or or, uh, Blast from the Past. But... um, yeah, I, I, I don't sort of choose. I don't think, oh, I'll write comedy, I'll write... I just, it just forms. It's like when you... I don't know if you've ever tried to paint a picture or even just draw a doodle. You don't really know what's going to happen until you've done it, and then you can fix it up a bit and make the nose bigger and make the smile better. Do you know what I mean? And it, <laughs> it, That's the way I write novels. You know, they form... 
Speaking about writing them, um, mm. I'm always so excited when a, a new Ben Elton book hits the hits the uh, hits the bookshops. But how, how long does it seems like you you always got one on on the go? So how long does it take to to write these novels? Well, I don't always have one on the go. I mean, Two Brothers was two years ago, mm. and I, I yeah, I have had you know I've been working on time and time again on and off ever since. So. Look, I could tell you, I don't know if you added up the hours and said eight hours a day, how many days, you'd probably, probably only be three or four months, but often it's two or three hours, and then there's a lot of thinking and there's mm. gestation, and so, you know, I'll tell you, it's either two years or four months. It's, it's, it's somewhere between those two two times. <laughs> now, you were on uh, Q&A on Monday night, yeah. and there's been a lot of positive feedback uh, from you being on the show and what you said. Yeah, that's very nice. I'm glad to think people were listening. I think Q&A should be passionate. I think people should talk about what they believe in. The problem is that politicians from both sides go on and they have to tow a party line. They have to, you know, they've got, they're, they're really not thinking, what do I feel? They're thinking, what do I say and how can I come across? And I wish people would talk more from their heart. And I, I tried to. And I, I know that Mr. Turnbull, you know, he has. I think he has very clear views on, on climate change, and I think he personally, I think he's having to suppress them, but, you know, he's a member of a political party, so he has to do his thing. I'm an individual. I was asked questions, and I spoke from the heart, and I'm glad that people, at the very least, they knew I was being genuine, even if they didn't agree with me. Well, I Mal- feel very, very strongly on these issues. Malcolm Turnbull suggested that maybe you should start a YouTube account like comedian Russell Brand. I haven't noticed it in my YouTube feed yet. Uh, <laughs> I don't... Did he say that? Yeah. I didn't, oh, right. Um... Look, I'd love to. I think if I was a young man, I would. Um, but I really do. I'm not up to speed. It's pathetic. But I can scarcely use my iPhone. I know that sounds ridiculous. It'd only take me a day or two <laughs> to learn how to do all this. But I never seem to have that day or two. So I'm not on Twitter. I don't have Facebook. And I certainly wouldn't have the faintest idea how to set up a YouTube account. And I guess at some point, maybe I'll get down to it. But, you know, I'd I'm still enjoying old media. I like writing novels. I like doing interviews on the radio, talk, go on Q&A. Uh, look, I probably ought to get a bit hipper, but currently I haven't yet done it. Well, that could be a great idea for the next book. An, an older middle-aged man uh, tries to get on social media. Yeah, yeah, that might be kind of fun. I mean, I wrote a big thing about social media in my novel, um, uh, uh, Blind Faith, which was about the mm. collapse of privacy, but that's a very different area. Ben Alden, we thank you so much for taking your time out this morning. Really appreciate it. Well, I enjoyed talking, Pabs. That was a very, very nice interview. So thanks a lot, and uh, keep on keeping on, man. Classic Gold, today's hits. Spirit.